Greek mythology is rich in tales and interesting characters. Medusa is one of the most fascinating and riveting legends from ancient Greece. The story of Medusa, a character from Greek mythology, is both tragic and fascinating. Medusa was not always a monster. She was initially one of the most beautiful women, born to sea gods, Phorcys and Ceto. Phorcys is typically depicted as a god of the hidden dangers of the deep. He is a son of Pontus, the sea, and Gaia, the earth, which places him among the oldest generation of Greek gods, the primordial deities. Sato represents the dangers and monsters of the sea. She is also the child of Pontus and Gaia. Phorcys and Sato are said to be the parents of the Gorgons, including Medusa, the Graiae, three sisters who shared one eye and one tooth among them, and other sea monsters like Echidna and the serpent Ladon, who guarded the golden apples in the garden of the Hesperides. Medusa was the sister of Steno and Uriale. Unlike her sisters, who were immortal, Medusa was mortal and also looked like a normal woman, while her sisters appeared as half-serpent-type creatures called Gorgons. Medusa was also portrayed as the most beautiful lady with a kind and gentle heart. As Medusa grew up, she became more beautiful, attracting the attention of many, including her friend Ethiclus, who fell in love with her. However, Medusa had aspirations to become a priestess of Athena, a role requiring absolute purity, including remaining a virgin. The selection of Medusa as a priestess was often based on criteria like family lineage, personal qualities, and signs of favor from the gods. As a priestess, Medusa would have been involved in various rituals and duties in the temple, serving directly under the patronage of Athena. Medusa's dedication and beauty drew more people to Athena's temple, not just for worship, but to see Medusa. This caught the attention of Poseidon, the sea god, who saw an opportunity to get back at Athena. One of the primary reasons for their rivalry is the contest over who would be the major deity of the city of Athens. Both Athena and Poseidon participate in this honor. To win the people of the city over, each deity offered a gift. Poseidon struck the ground with his trident, creating a spring, but the water was salty and not very useful. Athena, on the other hand, offered an olive tree, symbolizing peace and prosperity. The people of Athens chose Athena's gift, and thus the city was named after her. This defeat was a significant blow to Poseidon's pride. After that, Poseidon wants to take revenge on Athena. The turning point in Medusa's life came with her encounter with Poseidon. According to the myth, Poseidon either seduced or assaulted Medusa in the temple of Athena. After her encounter with Poseidon, Medusa did not remain pure and virgin. This act was a desecration of the temple's sanctity and a violation of Medusa's vow of celibacy, which could be seen as a direct offense to Athena herself. This made Athena angry at Medusa. Athena, in her anger, cursed Medusa. The most famous aspect of Athena's curse was the transformation of Medusa's beautiful hair into a mass of writhing snakes, with the ability to turn anyone who looked directly at her into stone. This change was not only a physical alteration, but also a symbol of Medusa's new, monstrous nature. The transformation led to Medusa's isolation. Her monstrous appearance forced her to flee from civilization and live alone, away from other people, to avoid accidentally harming them. In some versions of the myth, Medusa's sisters, Steno and Uriale, who were also Gorgons but immortal, lived with her and protected her, but not for a long time. Medusa was mortal, later killed by the hero Perseus. Perseus was the son of Zeus, the king of the gods, and Danae, the daughter of King Acrisius of Argos, King Polydectes of Seraphis, who desired Danae and wanted to get rid of Perseus, sent him on this seemingly impossible mission, hoping he would not return. Perseus was tricked into promising to bring King Polydectes the head of Medusa. This quest was thought to be impossible and deadly. Perseus received help from the gods. Athena provided him with a polished shield to use as a mirror, 
so he could see Medusa without looking directly at her. Hermes gave him a sharp, adamantine sword to decapitate her. He also received a pair of winged sandals from Hermes for flight, a magic satchel to safely contain Medusa's head, and Hadi's helm of invisibility to evade a detection. The first challenge for Perseus was finding the location of Medusa. Perseus sought out the Greia, three ancient sisters who shared one eye and one tooth between them. By cleverly, Perseus made them reveal the location of the Medusa. Medusa lived with her two immortal sisters. Upon arriving, Perseus found the Gorgons asleep. He approached Medusa. To avoid looking directly at her and turning into stone, Perseus used Athena's mirrored shield as a reflection to guide his actions. Once he was in position, he swiftly used Hermes' sword and beheaded her. From Medusa's severed neck sprang Pegasus, the winged horse, and Chrysair, a giant wielding a golden sword. Perseus arrived at Polydectes' palace while the king was holding court or during a banquet. Perseus revealed Medusa's head, turning Polydectes and his companions into stone as revenge. Perseus freed his mother and assumed the kingship of Seraphos for a short time. He later left the island, giving the throne to Dictus, the fisherman who had rescued and raised him. After completing his adventures, Perseus gave Medusa's head to Athena, who placed it on her shield, the Aegis.